Welcome to the Nathan.net. Android 8.1 has a x86 build, so I uh, thought we'd uh, play around with that today. I already have one installed, but I want to go through the actual install process and some of the things I've learned and doing it a couple times already. So with this, we're just going to create a new virtual machine. And I have the ISO. So we're going to browse. It's already at the location. Um, this is the x86-64. This is 8.1 R1. So it has some bugs with it. So hopefully they'll fix some of that before um, long. Uh, this is, uh, I just left it as unknown. We're going to go through to adjust some of these settings. Now I'm going to give it 4 gigs, which is probably way more than it needs, and 4 CPUs. Just because I got it. And then for this one, I'm just going to do 10. So I'm going to call this one. So we'll call this one Android 8 YouTube. And uh, the network's going to be NAT. But I want to customize before we go any further. So one of the things I noticed is that on CPUs, because I didn't find it, I could just do copy host configuration. And that seemed to help. And then the video. Oh, i got to apply it. The video, um, you can leave it this or you could use VGA actually. I think I'm just going to leave it this on this one. So I'm just going to click the mainly use the host and then begin install. Now the live CD works pretty well, the live option, but I'm going to do uh, installation. I'm going to install it. And then for this, you want to do C for create. And you can use GPT or you could just tell it no and it'll come to this one. And you do a new uh, primary. I'm just going to take the default for that. I'm going to mark it as bootable. And then I'm going to go all the way over here to right. Type yes and hit enter. And while it writes this, it just should be really quick. And then the next thing is you go to quit. So now you can see that you have a bootable partition there. You hit OK. I've been selecting EXT4. And then you need to say yes to write the EXT4 partition. And if you skip this and don't install Grub, it hasn't been booting. So I find this is a mandatory step. And this one is kind of optional if you want to do it. And I just selected yes. So at this point it's going to actually do the install for you and it goes really fast. Now it's actually syncing the disk. At this point, I uh, want to do a reboot to make sure everything's going to come up properly. And you can see uh, the grub worked here. Select the first one. And this will be the first time booting. We'll make the screen larger. Go. Got a full screen, and if I slide it over, we should be able to see CPU usage. The first boot will take a little bit of time, but after this, it seems to go faster. Okay, at the first boot, this is the screen you get, and just click, click in here and click start. And when I did the install, I uh, put in all my information, but this time I'm just going to skip the personal information, which will not allow the Google Play Store to work, but it, you can get to that point. And even though this says takes a minute or two, it was five to ten minutes last time. Alright, that one went only a couple minutes. 
So for this one, I'm going to click set up new. And it should ask for some email account here. And I'm going to wait. So for this part, I'm going to skip the account stuff. Yep. And then click next. Um, call it the Nathan. And we will disable location. Disable the center of the data and agree. And for this one, I'll click no thanks. Now, this thing will keep popping up on which launcher to use. I've been using Launcher 3 and uh, I select an always. It'll take a little bit to pop up here. Now, one of the things is the screen has, I believe it's like a 10 minute, let's go take a look at that setting here. I think it was display. Yeah, after 10 minutes of activity, yeah, I'd set that to 30. So what would happen is the screen would go blank and I wouldn't be able to do anything in this screen, even though moving the mouse wouldn't do it. So what I would do is I would hit my, uh, Control and Alt, my left one, and go to this and go to Reboot, and that would cause the screen to unlock. I didn't, couldn't figure out another way to do it. Um, and if you go to Power Off, it will actually, or Shut Down, it will um, give you an option to reboot or Power Off. So once you're at this point, you could do your Google Store and you can install the tablet apps. There's also settings you can do. It's actually kind of neat having all this information. To install some of the apps, I noticed it was a little bit slow, but it's nice for testing and just having that functionality. And you can see that it's just uh, Android, and it's actually doing updates right now. So I'm going to let that finish, and then I'm going to do a reboot at this point. And I found that actually helped things out and speed it up. If I tried to do too much right now, I found it kind of lagged, even though I was given a lot of resources. So it's still doing all its updates and stuff okay so if I do my control and alt and then I can go to shut down and then I click in here and you can see that it gives me a power off option just power that off okay it is completely powered off And if you're not there to select the grub, it will automatically go through and start booting. It shouldn't take too long now. I don't think it's as optimized, but it is uh, really handy if you're going to have like a dev environment or just a way to play with and test different things. So that's it. Um, if you have your Google account synced, you can actually go and use the Play Store. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.